So what are the main differences between academy analysis and first team analysis? So this is a question that I've received quite a lot and actually got it another you know, few more times actually on the back of my video last week. So the video I did last week is linked down below if you haven't seen it. It was all about the average week for a first team analyst and it was about a, a busy schedule of a game on a Saturday, a game on a Tuesday and all the work in between. So from that, I think someone actually popped a comment underneath the video and asked what it was like. Does it differ? Is it the same workload kind of thing for an academy analyst basically? So... I thought I'd put this video together just to go over the main differences that I kind of think that, you know, are between being a first team analyst and a academy analyst. So it's logical to start with the workload, as I mentioned. So in that example, we were playing Saturday, Tuesday, every single week, pretty much. You know, that tends to be the case in the AFL. And a lot of them games do involve travel as well. So you're not in a regionalised league or anything like that. So you've obviously got long, long distances of travel for certain away games. So that's the first thing that it differs in terms of the first team and the academy. So the academy, obviously, the, t the individual age groups have less games. So, for example, the under-18s will have less games than the first team, typically. It might be similar-ish, but there's, you know, they don't play in as many cups and stuff like that. They won't tend to play Saturday, Tuesday, every single week. There will be some midweek games, but there will be less. But you do have to consider that if you are an academy analyst, the academy has, say, 10 age groups. So there would technically be 10 games a week. Now, that sounds a lot more obviously than the first team but typically in an academy setting you would you know you wouldn't be expected to cover all of the age groups yourself so you'd either spend time with you know the main age groups so the 20 23s 21s 18s etc um, and then you obviously may have other staff to help you out with the younger ones and this is a lot where interns come in as well so for example the main games for say the 18s and the 16s would be on a saturday morning saturday afternoon ish and then the younger ones would play on a sunday so sunday is a lot is the place where a lot of people start their analysis journey really so they'll get an internship they'll work on a sunday morning and they'll be filming the the young the young age groups within an academy so if you are the head of an academy in terms of the analysis that is you might not necessarily have to work the, the sunday you might cover a game on a saturday but then you've got interns and other members of staff that will cover the younger ones on the sunday so that could be you know potential for a day off potentially but then you've also got the midweek as well so if you're not playing tuesdays and stuff like that in the week you could potentially then have the Wednesday off. Again, it would just depend on your workload and what the schedule is for the team for that particular week. Okay, so I think following on from that, as I mentioned, in terms of the interns and the extra staff, the video that I did on the first team was solely, I did that specifically on just one analyst within the team because that is a lot more common when you got the first team, you know? So if resources aren't great, you've got one guy trying to do everything basically for the first team and that's kind of how it unravels to be a blur of all the games you're playing every every sort of three days or so. I mean, you're trying to do the, the post-match, the pre-match, all the presentations and all that with the travel as well. So it's, it's quite overwhelming. So... In the academy, as I mentioned, you would sometimes, again, it depends on what category academy you are and what resources the club has got. So sometimes you might have, you might be allocated a couple of age groups. So someone might look after the 16s and 18s, someone might look after the 15s and 14s, for example, and you kind of have a couple of age groups each. Even, you know, the top teams might actually give an age group to a specific analyst, but then also, you know, you might even have more than two. It depends on, again, the resources, like I've said. So... Typically, you'll find that the lower down you go in terms of the age groups, the less analysis is actually done. So, for example, the under nines, they might get filmed on a Sunday morning by an intern and it might not actually get coded. It might just be coded quite basically in comparison to what you're coding for the under 18s, for example, and, and then the first team. So you have got that extra help with additional staff members because, again, depending on what category you are in terms of the academy, so Cat 1, Cat 2, Cat 3, etc., there are minimum requirements as to what needs to be done in terms of video analysis. So that does help the case as well. So, you know, you've got the less games, less midweek games, I would say, and you've also got the extra staff to help you out with the different age groups too. Okay, so moving on to something else that I think is obviously quite an obvious one that dif you know differentiates the academy and the first team is the pressure. So, and that's not to say it's not you know a high pressured environment in an academy, but I think if you go to the first team level, you you know you're competing for three points on a weekend, and that might be the difference between getting promoted, getting relegated, which you know as you know in terms of the playoffs could be worth hundreds of millions of pounds. So there's lots and lots of money at stake. So obviously the first team is high pressured environment. Academy, obviously, the higher up the age groups you go, the pressure does sort of increase towards the first team. But you can imagine the pressure at an under nines game. If you miss a deadline, it's not going to be as drastic if you miss that deadline than if you miss the, the pre-match for the first team, for example. So I think that is a main thing. And 
kind of just flipping that on its head, the pressure is then kind of replaced more with the development side of things in the academy. So, you know, rather than being stressed to win the game and, you know, everything's about winning on Saturday, for example, your focus in the academy will be about the development of players. So some people prefer this, some people don't, you know, some people love the buzz of the first team, but others are very passionate about developing young players, you know, so that is a kind of a, a big focus on the academy. So you might be an academy analyst and you might actually watch a player go all the way from the under nine to the first team if you're there long enough, for example. Um, and obviously that's a great thing to be a part of. You know, you've helped in the development of that, that actual player. Okay, so something else that I would say is different is actually the types of analysis that you're doing. So when I did the video on the first team, which again, like I said, it's linked down below, you'll notice a lot of it is pre-match, you know, you're doing pre-match, you're focusing on the opposition, you're doing a lot of that because again, it's all down to winning, you need to win the game basically, so a lot of it is focused on that and also you won't get, you know, first team players, you know, doing their own analysis for example, they'll kind of be given clips to watch, you know, look at dossiers etc, but they're not going to be sat there clipping out their, their highlights from the game, but that is something that is done in an academy setting, so you know, within the academy, a lot of academies now are encouraging the players to be able to self-analyze. So that would be a part of the, their kind of working week as, as an academy player. So there's obviously various different software you can use for this, um, in play included. But the, you know, the players can actually, after they've got the game, they can get the clips from the from the analyst, but they can also go ahead and do their own. So they're basically increasing their knowledge of the the game, you know, the tactical aspects of the game, and they're actually learning to do some self self reviews as well. So you know, that wouldn't obviously happen in the first team. You're not going to get a, a seasoned professional 30-year-old um, first-team player kind of going and, and picking his highlights out because it's not, it's not needed. So that is a definite difference in terms of what kind of analysis takes place. As on the same topic, you would also do things like best practice, for example, in more so in the academy. So, for example, you might show the under-10s players actual clips of the first team so they can obviously they want to aspire to be in the first team so you can if you're working on something in terms of playing out from the back let's say in the under 10s level you could show a good example from the first team of them actually doing that and the under 10s can obviously look up to them players and that will be something they can focus on and try and replicate when they go back out and play again so yeah i think that the types of analysis you've obviously got the the mentality in terms of like i said the pressure the winning and the development the extra staff and obviously the workload and the days off as well one thing I will say on this actually is, you know, a lot of people see the academy as a stepping stone to the first team. You know, that if that's your goal and you want to be a first team analyst, then that's fine. But, I, you know, I don't think being a academy analyst is any lesser than a first team analyst, for example. It's a diff it is a different job and um, you're obviously doing different things day to day and you're working with a different kind, you know, different type of athlete, really. I think I did another video as well, in fact, on the wages and, and kind of what you would expect to get paid in these different roles. So, you know, as you go up the leagues, you, like I say, you do get more and you might get more for a first team analyst and an academy analyst. But if you're managing an academy, if you're overseeing the whole analysis provisions for, a, for an academy, for example, then there's no reason why you can't earn more than a first team analyst because you've got things like the extra staff to manage. You know, you're managing them. You might be managing a budget, you know, for the whole academy, for example. So I don't think it's something to, you know, look down on academies, you know, not worse than being a first team analyst. It's just a different role. It depends on what your passion, where your passions lie. If you're, if you're very keen on developing young players and working with, you know, in that environment, then it could be a great job for you. Okay, so that's it for the main differences. If I have missed anything, feel free to leave a comment below and we can kind of touch on them in another video. And like I say, I haven't been a academy analyst for a long time myself. I did, I have done the job and I've done that and first team. And those are the main differences that I kind of found at the time. But again, that was a, you know, a while ago. So there may be things that I've missed and things have kind of changed since then. So if you have found the video useful, please do like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. And you know, like I say, leave a comment below. The video about the first team and analysts average week is also linked down below, so check that one out. Um, but again, thanks again for watching and have a great day.